Hello, so we are just a few days away now from Christmas and, and like we said last week, we are just doing a few short sermons on having a short look at the message of Christmas and we want to think about it. We want to think about it in a biblical sense. We, wanna, we don't want to just get caught up in what's happening all around us. We don't want to get caught up in just the tradition of it all, but want to actually rethink about it, think about what it all means. And this is important for us. So last week we looked at John's Gospel, and today we're going to be looking at Matthew's Gospel. And I'm just going to be reading from verse 18 down to verse 25. It says in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother... Mary was betrothed to Joseph before they came together. She was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take uh, to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child, and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife, and did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. The book of Matthew begins in chapter 1 with a genealogy and we didn't read all of that but it is an important part of scripture and I find it really fascinating because this is how Matthew opens up his story he opens up his account rather of Jesus Christ and he uh, like if you remember John uh, John in John's Gospel last week we looked at how John took us all the way back to the beginning Matthew too he wants to take us back before he takes us forward he wants us to see that Jesus didn't just pop out of nowhere but no Jesus is part of a succession Jesus is part of a design Jesus is part of God working throughout history through all these different people and through all these different circumstances God is working out his glory and he has planned it and it is and it is something of history and and this is the beautiful thing that we have this is the strength we have when we come to Christmas is that here we are we're not we're not going around with a philosophy. We don't have an ideology. We have facts. We have history. We have, we have something that has been, uh, you know, put in, recorded for us in genealogies, in, in historical articles, in, in all of this. It is here before us in rock solid fact and history. Jesus will be born. And so this is a powerful thing that we have. And and, and today, so much of what the Christmas message is made out to be is just a philosophy, is just an idea of goodwill and good cheer. Friends, we have to see that it is much more than that. <laughs> and God save us if that's all it is, if it's just a philosophical way of doing life. No, what we have is something rock solid. We're building our life upon, uh, upon God working throughout history. God, this is actual. This is real. This isn't a fairy tale. Uh, friends, this is something so profound that we have here. God entering our world. And here we have in Matthew some of the details of how he came. Because you remember John's Gospel. John, John 
didn't really get, go into all the details of how he came. He's just telling us why he came. He's saying he came to bring us back into fellowship with himself. He came that we may know this love of God. But here in Matthew, we have Matthew, Mark and Luke are the synoptic gospels. They give us a, a synopsis. They give us a, the, the details, if you like, of Jesus' life. And we find here, firstly, our first point was that it is historical, grounded in genealogy, in historical documents. But then we also find that it is it is here found in the life of Mary and Joseph. Mary comes and she is meant to be, she's engaged to Joseph, but before she marries him, before she knows him in that biblical sense of the word, know, you know, to be intimate with Joseph, before she's married and been had a chance to be intimate with Joseph, she falls pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Now this isn't just something that was just out of the blue. No, this is something that has happened according to the scriptures. This is something that has happened uh, and this is something that all of Israel were waiting for. All of Israel and all the women of Israel were waiting to be for someone to be uh, given this right or given this uh, great privilege of, of bearing the Saviour of Israel or the Saviour of the, the world. And so they're all waiting for this to happen. The wonder and, and the, the, the amazement that happened for Mary was not that, that this was an exceptionally strange concept that was happening to her, but the thing that amazed her is that it was happening to her. <laughs> like, out of all people... She's just amazed that this is happening to me. This thing that all of Israel is waiting for and all the women are thinking, uh, uh, you know, there's probably possibly people praying that it would happen for them, but instead it happens for Mary. And we find that here it is in, uh, well, in a, in a couple of places, but in, a, in verse 22, it says, So all this is done that it might be fulfilled that was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, verse 23, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. See, as I said, they're, they're waiting for this. So we have point number one is that this is a matter of history. But point number two, that this is a matter of prophetic fulfillment. What we have at Christmas is not, again, out of the blue event, but this is something that has been forecast. This is something that has been spoken of all throughout the biblical history, all throughout the prophets of Israel. They're talking about, they're, they're prophesying, they're saying, He will come. This is the one who will come. And so what we have at this Christmas time is, again, it's, We've got to get out of this ideological, uh, sentimental sort of idea of what Christmas is. No, this is the fulfilment of prophecy. This is the fulfilment of all of history. The, the, the climax of history, if you like, comes together in Christ. And I just love this prophecy that they've chosen here. That they said that his name shall be called Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. And this is this has uh, been our theme all year, is just the presence of God. God with us. God is, God is with us. And this is the great sense of it in, at Christmas time, is that we have God with us. Isn't that amazing? Doesn't that thrill, thrill us more than anything else? God comes with us, Emmanuel, God with us. I want to spend just a couple of moments back in verse 21 because I think this is an incredible portion of it all and it says, and she will bring forth a son 
Look at that again. There's this, uh, there's this sonship, this relationship, this fellowship that we're meant to have. And it says, you, And you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is the Christmas message. <laughs> this, is, this is Christianity. This is the message of Christianity. Is Jesus Christ. He is the meaning of the word is Saviour. He will save them from their sins. Friend, we all have failings, don't we? we if we're to be honest with ourselves, if we're to, to look back over this past year, we didn't get it right all the way through, did we? We, we, didn't, we didn't make it through this year somehow and, and all by our own efforts just make it through spotless and, and without no we made mistakes we, 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 and, and if we have an honest look at our lives our lives full of mistakes of our failings of our sins but what do we have at christmas time if you're a believer it's a reminder it's a celebration it, it's a reconnection with this truth but if you do not know the lord at, at all at this time this is this is a, this is your hope. This is this is a message of joy. This is this is why we can say good cheer. This is why we can say celebrate the joy of Christmas is because in Jesus Christ we are saved from our sins. Man, this is this is real stuff. <laughs> and uh, I just I feel really compelled just over these last couple of times to just bring this home a little bit is that we cannot we cannot afford to have a watery a weak idea of what Christmas is no we have been saved from our sins this is the work of of the Christmas message and this is the work of Jesus see the work of of Christmas, the work of Jesus here is that of redemption. See what the Bible has in mind at Christmas time is not just a, a kind of just a, a general notion of just being kind and being nice and being being good and, and avoiding being na naughty and doing the wrong thing. No, what the Bible has in mind here of something of of weight, something of real worth here. He, the, the message of Christmas is that people would be finally set free from that enemy that has been plaguing us our whole life. That enemy that has been dragging us down. That thing that has been robbing us of the joy. Has been robbing us from fellowship. That has been robbing us from peace. Oh, you, you think that peace... Oh, well, we, we could think that peace is going to come by... You know pol politics. You know what we are, what we are sort of seeking. Ah, oh, peace is the idea that if if the world just began to love each other, if our governments really got together and we really just democratically work through the issues of humanity, and and if you know we just uh, then then the world will be put right, and then we will have peace. All we need to do is just have a, some peace talks. No, the Bible is much more realistic than that. How, are we any better off? <laughs> this is what we come down. Are we any better off 2,000 years on from Christ? Going about it, trying to intellectualize it, trying to educate our way through to peace, trying to politicize our way through to peace. Are, are, we, are, we, any, are we any closer to peace? Uh, friends, the only way humanity really comes to peace is when we come face to face with reality. The problem, the reason why there is not peace is because of sin. Sin is the problem. And this is what Jesus comes to deal with. He says, I will save them from their sins. And we can only get rid of our sins when we come to Jesus Christ. And that is the salvation of the world. Uh, so what, why is there so little joy? Why do we struggle to find joy? Once again, sin. 
<laughs> you know, we're so riddled with sin. Yeah, but you know, the reason why we have this idea of heaven being a place of joy and laughter and happiness and Revelation tells us he'll wipe away every tear. You know, we have this sense of because heaven is a place where where love abounds, firstly, but where we are truly rid of our sins. And that's what makes it a joyful place. See, we we cannot just simply just put on a smile. That's, that's not, not dealing with the issue. We cannot just you know, just just trick ourselves into being happier and 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 then you know doing all the things that no it is not by buying presents no that's not what brings joy it is not by even being together together as wonderful as that is with family and friends one beautiful and wonderful and how happy that makes us feel and for the time but that is not what is going to bring the world to joy no joy comes comes when we deal with the issue of sin and Jesus. The Bible says this is what needed to happen. This is this is real talk. <laughs> this is what this if you want joy, we need Jesus Christ. We need a Savior. Look at this. He says, we call him Jesus because he will save them from their sins. And I love that. I think I've said this, used this illustration before, is that you, if someone is drowning out at sea, you know, they cannot swim, they're out there, it's not educating them, it's not going out there with a manual and now it's trying to teach them how to swim, that's not what's going to save them, you know, it's not a rule book, it's not them now learning their way, it's not, it's not even changing the rules and, and saying, well, you know, they, they we, we should have had the flags over this way and that's not going to save them. No, the thing that saves them is someone has to go to them and someone has to pull them out of the water. That is what it means to be saved. And so any idea this Christmas that, that we are going to come into a better place, the world is going to change by simply just educating ourselves and by by uh, relearning and changing the rules and by politics. It, see, the Bible is much more realistic than all of those things. It says what you need is not an education. You didn't need a teacher. Oh, yes, we have all of those things also in the scriptures. But what we really need and what we celebrate at Christmas time is a saviour. We have Jesus the saviour of the world coming, he reaches out to us where we were in deep water and he saves us and he lifts us up, oh the wonder of Christmas the wonder of Jesus Christ and friends I hope that we see that this saviour today is with us, he came to us in history, he came to us as fulfilment of prophecy and he comes to us and he came to us as the active saviour of God to save us from the true problem that is our sins. Father, I pray now, O oh God, that truly you would indeed save all who come to you. For some of us, this may be our first time of really turning to you and saying, God, I need you to save me from my sins. I cannot save myself. And Father, I pray for these ones calling out to you that you would indeed deliver them, deliver us from our sins and truly cause us to live in the liberty that is Christmas, the liberty of Christ. Father, I thank you for all of us who also have known you and have walked with you and may we once again Father, know this wonderful, may we celebrate with all of our might, knowing that we have been set free from our sins and we bear them no more. Oh, let us come face to face with that reality and that truth. Now, oh God, in Jesus' name.